Coach Craig going into his third season and kind enough to start his uh, start his Wednesday with us here on Off the Bench. Good morning, Coach. Thank you for your time. Good morning. How you guys doing? Doing great, man. Doing great. Uh, th- that was obviously uh, your, your head coach, LSU's head coach, talking about the relationship he shares with you and what you mean to the program. Uh, talk about kind of working for Coach O and the, all this success that this program is experiencing right now. Yeah, I tell you what, it's been it's been great. I, it's just all started back a couple years back when he called me out of the blue. I think it was late December, and, and he said, "Hey, James, would you consider coming out here to help me out?" And, and uh, the, the, the one thing that just triggered me was when we left SC, I felt like we had a job that was unfinished. When he left, I thought it was in the in bad terms. Um, I, I really thought it was a, a, a bad choice. And me personally, just watching everybody in the room and all the guys, there was older guys crying, there was kids crying when he all left, and we knew we had unfinished business to take care of. So when he called me, uh, I jumped at the chance to come, especially at a place like LSU. So I was I was really thrilled to do it, and uh, I'm excited to be here. Hashtag LSU Trenchman, LSU offensive line coach, James Craig, stopping by here on Off the Bench. He's on Twitter, at James Craig LSU. We were talking about it, setting up the interview, Coach, going in to this segment, that last year that position was a position of concern going into the year, and then coming out of it, you guys win the Joe Moore Award, and then I look at the success that not only the program experienced over the weekend in the NFL draft, but specifically your position group in signing five guys. Uh, Obviously, Lloyd, Sadiq, and Damian were were drafted, and you had two sign uh, as free agents. Just talk about the, 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 the success over the last 12 months with your group. Well, it goes to, you know, what Coach o always preaches, you know, we talk about getting the character character guys in this program. You know, I, and the same thing with the offensive line. You want to get, you know, good character kids. You want to get hardworking, good work ethic kids. You want to get kids that have a grit, okay, that have that want to, that passion. And you also want to get kids with toughness. I think it really hurt that group uh, the year when we first got there because we were, we're, you know, we're learning a new system and we're learning a new way to do things. And I, I think it, 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 it really, it really shocked those guys. And, and, and they, you know, they were really bitter about it and they fought to get where they wanted to be and just doing the extra, you know, like I talk about their work ethic, you know, a lot of those guys you talk about like D Lou and, and Lloyd Cushenberry, they're, they're self starters. I mean, they, they wanted to go out there and do drills on their own and, and, uh, you know, when, when you can't do it and the only, that's the only downside, you know, sometimes with college football, you don't get a chance to work with them like you would in the NFL on a daily basis. And, and, uh, um, but they do it all on their own. So they, they just adapt and they knew all the drills, they knew it inside and out and they went out. There was times you'd walk in the facility and they'd be out there drilling on their own. You didn't tell them to do it. They just did it. And, and, uh, that's the kind of want to, you got to have. And that, that's why they had that. And I, What's funny is I, I heard something when D. Lou got drafted, and they said, hey, one of the commentators said, hey, Derek Brown got after him in the Auburn game. He didn't show. That's probably one of my favorite D. Lou games, to be quite mm-hmm. honest with you. And that shows that shows the, that line last year that if you watch that game and continue to watch it, you watch how those guys fought. Yeah, D. Lou got knocked down, but you know what? He fought, and, 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 and uh, that's that whole line. That's that whole line mentality that we had last year. James Craig joining us here off the bench, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. You were a part of that Super Bowl 50 winning team with the Denver Broncos back in 2015. Cushenberry goes there. Uh, they get a guy that wore 18 at LSU, a leader. What was the conversation with uh, with the franchise that you used to work for and and, and your center? Yeah, it was funny. They they called me. I actually did an interview the other night with them, and uh, it was it was pretty neat just talking you know, about some of the guys that we had in the past. But I, I told them, I go, they're getting a guy like we had at Super Bowl 50. We had a young man named Matt Paradis. Same kind of thing I'm talking about. He was a, he was a, he was a, a, a matter of fact, he was a walk-on at Boise State. Um, again, he had that work ethic and that grit, that, that character, and he was a really sharp, smart kid. And he came in there. It's hard to work with a guy like Peyton Manning, you know, because he has a certain way he wants to do it. Well, Matt, Matt, Matt did it. And uh, Peyton had a good bond. He really, really enjoyed working with uh, Matt. Well, same with Lloyd and Joe Bur- Burrow, you know. Yeah. It's the same thing. Joe Burrow is the same same way as Peyton towards the end. He, him and Lloyd really got along. And say, so I told them, I go, you're getting a guy that's going to come in there and make, in my opinion, he's going to make instant impact because of how he prepares, okay, for everything.
every 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 aspect of this game. How did you like what you saw at center for just a limited time on the field? And who are the true options to replace Lloyd on his way out? Um, you know what? There's some good guys. You know, uh, there's a guy, uh, Chasen Hines. He played his true freshman year. I tell you what, he came in the Auburn game in a critical game. And, you know, he, he, he came in there and just as a young freshman, not really knowing much what was going on. But he came in there and he battled. And he battled in the Georgia game. Shoot, he played left guard for us in the Georgia game. Um, 2018, and and he fought. Now, I mean, he and I, we got to get that fight back in him. And and, and uh, uh, you know, I really, really like where he's going right now. Uh, when we had those three practices, I, I liked where he was headed. There were some signs that that really uh, showed me hey, he he can do it. Uh, and and uh, but he's got to continue to fight, continue to prove himself. And there's some good slew of young guys coming in, and there's guys that are you know. Uh, Joseph Evans came over from defensive line. We got Charles Turner. That was an IMG kid that, that's battling for it. But we got some good kids coming in, too, as well. Uh, Marlon Martinez is one guy that I could see uh, battling and fight for that uh, position, too. Uh, so it's going to be great competition. That's what it's all about. Coach O's been on the, on the air with us the past couple of weeks, Coach Craig, and it seems like every time he's here, he wants to get a message in about Dare Rosenthal, whether it's taking care of his business off the field to the, the 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 leader and the and, and the way that he's developing uh, as a football player, can you go into what you potentially could be your left tackle this season and how you see him developing? Yeah, I tell you what, he's he's been phenomenal. Um, you know, the the young man is uh, he, he's in it. Uh, you know, when when we first got him, he was a little distant as far as not really knowing what was going on. And all of a sudden, that light clicked in and. and having that success of him going in that Mississippi State game last year. He played a little bit at the Utah State. and uh, Having success really triggered him to start to do the right things. And I really, really feel good about um, there. Um, he's just got to keep continuing to grow. And one thing I really like about there, uh, he's real football savvy and smart. Like He understands football. Like He, he'll be back in the room there. He'll, he'd be telling Sadiq what to do uh, hmm. last year. And Sadiq, Sadiq would look back and go, "Hey, man, you shut up!" Man. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, yeah, they—he's they, uh, he, got that savvy, and, and uh, I'm fired up about there. And it seems like Doomerville could be a real option, right? In year one, Marcus Doomerville, the true freshman. Uh, no question. I, I tell you what, um, it's funny. Like um, he, he's down there, in, you know, South Florida, and he and Marlin—they're always working out together. So they do—they do drills together. They got their. Their offensive line coach is, is pushing him in the park and doing stuff, and and uh, his dad's right out there with him, man, working him. I, I, I be quite honest, I have not seen anybody work harder with uh, two guys coming in as true freshmen than those two guys right there. That's good news, James Craig, offensive line coach for LSU. Hashtag LSU Trenchman joining us here off the bench. ESPN New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Alexandria. Coach O mentioned the success that you guys have had on the graduate transfer. Um, trail, <laughs> whether it's Joe Burrow who will be the the all timer, or uh, or, or the, earlier this this season, you guys pick up Jabril Cox at linebacker, and then yesterday you had an offensive lineman coach, a four year starter from Harvard who shows his versatility. He's played all over the offensive line. Uh, your twenty fourth scholarship for this past recruiting class goes to Liam Shanahan, uh, a graduate transfer. Uh, explain to us about this prospect and a little bit about the recruiting to get him. Yeah, uh, you know, obviously when you, you, you lose Lloyd and you lose Sadiq, you didn't really know number-wise you were going to lose those guys at the time. And we had uh, we had one available, and, and we coach made a, a point to say, let's look and see if there's any offensive linemen. So we, we, I was targeting. I wanted to get a certain guy in the room. Me in particular is I wanted to get a guy that uh, had a sort of a chip on his shoulder, uh, smart, played some football, um, and, and more of experience because we got relatively a young room besides Ed Ingram and Austin Deculus. We got a lot of guys that haven't played a lot of football. So I wanted to get somebody that, that had a little bit of edge and played uh, some football. And, and uh, what's great with this portal thing, it's sort of like free agency in the NFL. The only thing is you don't get to work them out. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I started talking to Liam uh, a while back, and we've had great conversations, and I've had a great deal of success with you know, obviously, I coached at Colgate. I don't know what kind of kid, you know, comes, you know, from the uh, Patriot League and the Ivy League. I know what kind of their work ethic, uh, the way they approach, you know, the game. And, and uh, this kid, just he just hit me the right way. And, and uh, 
he just one thing we and we just ended up interviewing. I ended up was neat about the deal. I ended up interviewing the offensive line coach and Coach Moffitt got on there with the strength coach and we started formulating all the good things and positive things about this kid. There wasn't one bad thing anybody said about this guy. This guy's a blue collar worker. Um, he benches like over 400 pounds. He's, he cleans over 350. He's going to be a good leader for these guys in the uh, weight room. He's just going to be a role model for some of these younger guys. I think that, and that, and everything's all about competition, you know, and, and, and we wanted to get, we only had three guys coming in. We wanted to get a fourth cause we lost four, you know, and uh, we wanted to get some guys coming in and, and, and uh, uh, contributing, you know, and, and pushing the, the rest of the group. I say before we lost five. So, yeah. uh, so we wanted to, we want to make sure we get some guys coming in there uh, to contribute and, and just stir the pot a little bit with competition, you know? Yep. All five of those guys that you lost have an opportunity at the NFL at the next level. Coach Craig has totally changed the identity of that offensive line going into his third season, and he's got more talent on the way for 2020. Thank you for your time this morning, Coach. We'll catch up again soon. You bet, guys.